Thank you for tuning into the Parkside Parent Podcast. I'm Robbie Lacey, the middle school pastor, and it is our mission in student and children's ministries to support families as we help unbelieving students become committed followers of Jesus Christ. Today, we are glad to welcome back Jonathan Holmes and have him answer the question, how do I parent in the pandemic? Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us for our parent podcast. Thank you. Uh, Our question today is, how do I parent my kids during a pandemic? So we're in a unique time right now where uh, because of COVID, parents are at home with their kids and their spouses probably more than ever before. We've got some parents who are homeschooling for the first time. Uh, We've got parents who are both now working from home together, after school stuff and sports aren't happening for a lot of people. And so generally families are spending more time together at home than ever before. Now, there are a lot of positive aspects to that, um, but we're also seeing that there are a great deal of challenges that also come along with that. I've had plenty of conversations with parents and children and students where we're seeing that there's a heightened conflict between siblings and spouses and parents and children, um, and those challenges are kind of rising to the surface as everybody's spending more time together. So in this unique circumstance that we're facing right now, Jonathan, how can we parent our kids well um, during this pandemic? Yeah. Well, Danny, everything that you just mentioned, we've experienced in my in my own home of working from home on different days and my wife being at home and four kids. It's it's challenging. So the first thing I want to tell parents is be encouraged. Uh, that the same God that we served before COVID is the same God that we serve today. So uh, we can rest in that and we can have hope in that. Uh, the second thing I would say is know, know where the real issue is, right? It's not COVID. It's not your kids. It's your heart, right? COVID and kids only reveal what's going on in the heart. So the irritability, the frustration, the maybe just the trouble that we have in parenting, let's just remember what's what's the primary cause. It's, it's these issues in my heart. And one of the issues I think a lot of parents are struggling with is just the reality that they're not in control of very many things. And so when things don't go how we want, when the internet shorts out, when our kids are having a hard time listening to us, or when we're trying to make difficult school decisions, we can respond maybe negatively or irritably or out of frustration. And I think one of the first things we can do is just take our own souls to task. Now, I'm saying that to preach to myself because I don't do it very well, but that's something that all of us can engage in right now is just to say, hey, instead of maybe pushing and shifting the immediate impetus and burden of the conversation onto my teens or onto my kids, what do I need to change? How can God be helping me parent during this pandemic? Where do I need to grow in long suffering, right? That's a word that we don't use a lot right now, uh, but we're told in Ephesians chapter four that that's actually one of the keys to Christian character and to mm-hmm. fulfilling our calling, right? Patience, patience is good, but it almost sounds a bit too benign for us right now. That, that idea of long suffering, of we don't know when this is going to end. And so when we're trying to suffer well in a long time, we we look to Christ because he's our model for that. Uh, So I would say pay attention to your own heart in the midst of that. The second thing I would say is check in with your family as often as you can. Have maybe some set times during either the week or maybe bi-monthly where you do a little bit of a family summit, right? And just say, hey, how are we doing? Uh, Where are we growing? What's hard for us? And what's bad, right? And so those three categories of good, bad, and hard, they're always connecting with our identity as God's children who suffer, but who also struggle. So just talking Mm -hmm. and navigating some of those conversations with our family and with our kids to say, hey, what's good in your life? What's bad? What would you like to change? And what's hard? And then making those pivots back to the gospel. I think that can really help all of us during this time. Jonathan, that's really good. Um, We've been studying through James in our small groups this semester, and one of the things that um, we're considering is those just powerful opening verses where it says, count it all joy (laughs) when you encounter trials of various kinds because it's producing a steadfastness in your faith. And I think that has a lot to do with that kind of long-suffering that you're talking about. It's creating this... um, It's just understand that there's no suffering or difficulties that God wastes on Christians and Christian families. And just looking at, and it's so hard, it's easy, so easy to say that, but so hard to live it out, but to go all the things that are pressing in on my family and my heart and my life, 
God is actually using those things to grow me as a parent. Um, if, if you're a believer as a child or a student, is God use, or is using uh, these pressures to actually grow me. And um, I think that that is, we have to just constantly step back from the heat of the moment, the difficulty of the week, all of those challenges and say, this is something that God is using to grow me and to make me more like Jesus. Um, yeah, absolutely. Now, as we think about all the ways that we can grow in the midst of uh, the COVID situation, uh, we do know that eventually it is going to be over, that things will probably get back to normal, that our kids are going to head back to school, they're going to have sports again, uh, pa most parents will probably go back to work. How can we take maybe some of these new patterns, maybe some of these ways that we've grown as individuals and as families and as parents, how are some of the ways that uh, we can take what we've learned or done differently and carry it with us into the future? And yeah. maybe as you answer that question, are there things specifically with your family um, that you've learned during this season that you can take with you? Yeah. It's a great question. I, you know, one of the things that I think is always really helpful within some of these conversations with your kids is collaboration. So instead of parents just saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what life looks like. As much as is possible, collaborate with your kids. Bring them into the circle. So maybe one night over the dinner table, you say, hey, you know, we're all gearing back up. We're headed back to school. My kids are already in school. Hey, what's, what's something good that we learned during this COVID pandemic, during the stay at home that we want to keep doing? Maybe it was a tradition. Maybe it was an exercise. Uh, maybe it was a spiritual discipline that we want to keep engaging in. Uh, maybe it's meals together around the dinner table. Maybe that was something that got reclaimed for you uh, during COVID. Uh, maybe it was less social media time. Maybe it was taking walks in the metro parks. And to collaborate with your kids to say, hey, what did you enjoy about this season? And I would say in most of my conversations with kids and teens and families, Danny, yeah, there's been hardships, there's been difficulties, but I've actually been pleasantly surprised that a lot of families have said there's also been some gold nuggets too. There have been yeah. some real positives that have come out of that. Well, let's reclaim those, let's redeem those, and let's continue those on even when this pandemic, uh, when this pandemic closes down. And, and that's where I think that collaboration with your kids can be really helpful to say, hey, what did you enjoy about this time and how can we continue on with it? Uh, you know, I, I'd say for our family, you know, we have, I would say, just continue to double down on those dinner night conversations. So a lot of times with church things, you know, I'm out on Wednesdays or Tuesdays or whatever. Well, during COVID, I've been home quite a bit in the evenings. And so we have a lot of meals together. And pretty much every night, if you come over to my house, you're going to get asked questions of what was the best thing about your day? What was the hardest thing about your day? And how did you serve someone today? Or at least some permutation of those questions. And every single kid has to answer. Nobody gets a free ride. Nobody gets a pass. We all just converse and, and ask each other questions. And it's not always Jen and I, but it's our kids asking questions of one another. And so I know for sure that that would be a practice and a discipline that we would want to continue on even when COVID is over. Well, if you're a parent and you're listening to this, maybe you've never even thought about what are some of the gold nuggets that have come out of this uh, really difficult couple of months. And so I'd challenge you, if you're listening to this, to really consider what are some of those uh, positives uh, that you can take out of this and prayerfully discern um, what are the ways that even in the coming week you can make the most of um, this trial that God knows about, that he has purposefully placed in our life and that he's using uh, to grow us as parents and children and students. Jonathan, thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks for listening today. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And please check the show notes below for more resources regarding the topic we covered today. And be sure to tune in next week when we have on uh, some parents, Ryan and Miriam Connor, who have two students in our ministry, and they're going to answer the question, how do we balance school, sports, and involvement with the church?